first of all, I also want to thank you for this invitation, for such an interest in seminar. It is uh, very, I'm very pleased to take uh, part in the discussion. Um, so I've changed uh, the title of my presentation a little bit uh, to reflect uh, what I'm going to say. Uh, so uh, the title, the new title is uh, Possible World Interpretation of Fiction reference of fictional names and ontological status of fictional objects. Um, in my presentation I want to discuss uh, some problems of possible world interpretation of fiction uh, which uh, obtain from the point of view of uh, theory of reference uh, and uh, uh, from the point of view of ontology. Uh, so my um, approach will be in the scope of uh, analytic tradition um, and I will use uh, these initial premises uh, for my further analysis. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, that the view that fictional names have reference uh, is uh, a common sense view which results from the way we use these names in natural language. And also, uh, the next point, I defend uh, some kind of a realist view on fictional objects. It means that uh, I think there are fictional objects and we must explain what kind of objects are they. Uh, so, the goal of my presentation, of my report, uh, will be to uh, see if uh, possible world's uh, semantics can give us uh, the solution to these uh, two problems, ontological problem, what ontological status have uh, fictional objects, and uh, another problem, the problem of reference of fictional names. Uh, the issue of referential and ontological status uh, of fictional names and objects is uh, widely discussed nowadays in analytical uh, philosophy by philosophers and logicians. What is uh, especially interesting about fictional discourse for philosophy of language? Uh, fiction is uh, uh, fictional uh, texts. Texts uh, consist of sentences of natural language. And uh, these sentences describe events, uh, describe fictional characters, uh, and names of fictional characters are used in these sentences to speak about such characters. Uh, so, uh, there are at least two questions uh, emerging for philosophers of language in this regard. Uh, two questions for philosophers of language. The first uh, question is, uh, can we say that fictional names refer? Uh, so, do they have reference? And the second question is, uh, can we consider sentences of fiction as sentences of natural language? And can we assign truth, uh, truth values to them, like to other sentences of ordinary language? Uh, the solution of these uh, problems was suggested by many analytic uh, philosophers, including Searle, um, Gary Evans, Schiffer, Brown, Soames, uh, Lewis, Graham Priest, Sainsbury, and many others. Um, in common, um, there are two general answers for the first question. And, uh, uh, the answer to the second question depends on uh, how we, uh, which answer we give to the first. Uh, so, uh, the, first, uh, the first approach is that fictional names lack reference. In such case, we explain how we use these names uh, by means uh, of some notion of a sense, uh, by a content which is uh, pragmatically conveyed by users of fictional names. Also, we can represent fictional discourse as a special context uh, introduced by a fictional operator. It is the first view. The second view is uh, that fictional names denote objects. Uh, there are several theories which advocate this view. It's possible world theories, theories of objects of various kinds, for example, Meinungian theories, uh, and so on. Uh, so, from this point of view, possible world semantics provides a realist uh, interpretation of fictional names reference, which, from my point of view, is uh, the advantage of this approach. Uh, however, I think that uh, possible world interpretation of fictional entities 
faces some difficulties which are connected with reference, as I have already said, uh, reference of fictional names and um, uh, the issue of their ontological status. Um, I will analyze uh, two possible worlds interpretation of fictions. Uh, one is model realism of David Lewis and Graham Priest's uh, theory of fictional objects and show and we will try to show the problems of these interpretations. Uh, first, let's, uh, let's uh, consider David Lewis' model of realism. Uh, he applies uh, his theory, theory of model counterparts, to fictional entities. Uh, so, according to Lewis, fictional characters are inhabitants of possible worlds. Here are the main properties of Lewis' possible worlds. Uh, possible worlds exist in the same sense as our actual world. Actuality is a relative notion. Um, we consider our world as an actual because we are inhabitants of this world. Uh, also, possible worlds don't stand in special temporal relations with other worlds and in causal relations with other worlds. Um, possible worlds are complete. Uh, every possible world contains everything what uh, may be contained in this world. And according to Lewis, uh, there can be impossible worlds, so contradiction uh, excludes existence. Uh, the essence of a possible worlds uh, help us to understand uh, how fiction can be conceived according to Lewis. Uh, so, according to his position, fictional objects are real, uh, non-actual entities, which inhabit real and non-actual possible worlds. Uh, situations described in fictional stories, properties of fictional characters, relations between fictional characters are realized in these possible worlds. Um, also, according to Lewis, uh, fictional stories and fictional characters are always incomplete um, because some characteristics of events and characters stay indeterminate. Uh, so, in the ideas, for example, we don't know if Holmes uh, had an aunt, or uh, the quantity of uh, teeth in his mouth, and so on. Uh, and um, possible worlds must be complete. Uh, uh, so that's why one fictional story is realized in many possible worlds. In all of these worlds, um, everything described in the story takes, takes place and all properties ascribed to fictional characters uh, are implemented. And uh, some arbitrary properties are added to make this object complete. Uh, now I will turn to Graham Priest's view on fictional characters. It is uh, rather different from Lewis' view. Um, so let's look how he understands uh, the nature of possible worlds. Uh, Priest considers possible worlds as non-existent objects. Uh, there are possible worlds, uh, according to Priest, impossible worlds and open worlds. Uh, it depends on which logical principles are violated in these worlds. Now let's uh, see what uh, Priest says about fictional objects. Uh, so, fictional objects uh, don't exist in our world in any sense of this world. But uh, they, exist, uh, they exist and have all their properties in possible worlds, which implement everything what happens in the story. Uh, fictional objects, like other types of non-existent objects, have properties which are ascribed to them by mental representation of individual who imagines this object. And uh, mental representation is also always incomplete. Uh, so one, because of it, one mental representation is again realized in the set of possible or impossible worlds. And uh, Priest claims that since we have, uh, since we can imagine inconsistent features of uh, objects, there can be impossible, contradictory, inconsistent worlds. Uh, now uh, I can turn to difficulties which arise for these interpretations from the point of view uh, of reference, I, as I have said, and uh, ontological problems. Uh, in general, possible world theory uh, 
in connection with um, fictional objects has really some problems. Uh, for example, uh, identity of non-existent objects, their properties, and so on. But I think that uh, these problems can be solved in the scope of uh, possible world theory itself. But the problem of reference, for example, of fictional names, uh, I think it, uh, uh, it is implied by essence of uh, possible world uh, semantics itself. And I can uh, think that it can't be um, solved in the scope of possible world theory itself. Uh, so, uh, let's uh, turn to problem of reference first. Uh, so, names of fictional characters are used in fictional stories. Uh, it is known that proper name is an expression which denotes a unique object. Uh, it is one of the principles of theory of naming, tracing back to Rudolf Karnow. Uh, a uniqueness of fictional name referent is also implied, uh, I think, by intentions and language intuitions of an author and his readers. The author has an intention to speak about one object, not class of objects. Uh, on the other side, uh, as I have mentioned already, uh, fictional objects are incomplete, and incomplete object can't exist uh, in a possible world. Uh, so, in possible and, impos and impossible worlds, uh, their characteristics can be realized only in a set of uh, complete objects. That means that a proper name, uh, a proper name of fictional objects, denotes a class of objects, uh, which relates uh, the principle of theory of naming, uh, which I have already mentioned. Uh, so, uh, philosopher Sainsbury claims that we can postulate incomplete worlds to solve this problem, uh, but unfortunately, it won't help us because if there is an incomplete object Holmes in an incomplete world W, there will be incomplete worlds W1, W2, Wm, which are distinct from uh, world W in different uh, respects, except uh, these which are described in Holmes stories. Uh, so, Incomplete object homes will exist in all of such worlds, and uh, again we have a class of reference. Uh, we have that uh, the situation that one proper name denotes a class. Uh, the next problem concerns ontological status of fictional objects. Uh, of course, uh, investigation of reality and ontological uh, and creating some ontology uh, is not uh, the goal of uh, semantical theory. Uh, but um, I think if we want to uh, get some realistic interpretation of uh, fictional objects and fiction, uh, reference of fictional names, uh, we, um, we should choose the semantics which gives us some basis for an ontology of such objects. Um, but uh, it seems uh, for me that uh, the possible world semantics can't provide us such an ontology. Uh, first, uh, we can consider model realism. Uh, it is unclear why real physical worlds don't stand in special temporal relations to each other. On the other side, uh, physical essence of possible objects uh, in modern realism um, contradicts with author's intention who ascribes physical properties to fictional objects in the scope of some kind of language game. Uh, because uh, I think uh, when the author speaks about Sherlock Holmes, of course, he uh, realizes that it is uh, a non-existent object and uh, he really doesn't think that Sherlock Holmes uh, lives uh, on Baker Street in reality and so on. Uh, the theory of Graham Priest, I think, uh, faces uh, quite similar ontological difficulty. According to Priest, uh, possible worlds are non-existent objects, but their denizers uh, exist in this world and have all properties which are ascribed to them in relevant stories, 
including pro physical properties. It means that non-existent object, uh, a world, consists uh, of existent objects, and uh, including uh, objects who uh, exist physically. Uh, it implies that uh, these worlds should exist, exist, or objects in this world should be non-existent. So I conclude, uh, from my point of view, uh, possible world interpretation can offer a successful semantic theory which allows us uh, to assign truth uh, values to sentences with fictional names, so to speak, uh, to use these uh, names. But it is doubtful that possible world semantics can provide a basis for ontology of fictional names if we want uh, to defend some kind of realistic interpretation. And uh, also I think that um, uh, according to possible world interpretation of fiction uh, is implied that fictional names are common names, not proper names, which is also doubtful. So, thank you for attention.